my fellow citizens of all nations. Right now I'm going to talk about the main difference between Epicureanism and Stoicism. Basically, Epicureanism uh, is known for, it. they essentially seek the pleasure. But this pleasure specifically is not the pleasure you will image. It's a different type of pleasure. Freedom from pain in the body and from trouble in the mind. This is uh, Epicurean's uh, definition, Epicurean's definition of um, pleasure. Not uh, pleasure of lust, uh, uh, getting drunk all the time, having all those things. Not this, but freedom from pain in the body and from trouble in the mind. This is on the core things that already uh, makes a distinction uh, and differentiates Stoicism and Epicureanism uh, from each other. And it has uh, a lot of uh, interesting teaching uh, in it, which I'm going to share it with you right now. So let's keep going. Now, let no one when young delay to study philosophy, nor when he is old grow weary of his study. This is very remarkable and interesting way to put it because there is no, there is never a time, there is no never a perfect time to do anything in life. And just like that, all times excuses can be brought up. That, for example, I can be like, "Oh no, I am too young to study philosophy," <laughs> which is which which is of course not true. In fact, the trust is opposite. When you are young, you should ta study teaching, uh, start learning uh, philosophy and start genuinely educating yourself. Uh, and the other side of the spectrum would be like, oh, I'm too old. Yes, you are too old. That argument is true at the same time if you wasted all those terms. But staying on that argument and saying that, oh, I am too old won't bring you anything. It's simply, this is one of these things that where it doesn't matter if it's true or not, because he, I mean, like if he, it does not bring you benefits, it's the same, like it don't benefits you. And another point here was like, nor when he's old, grown, weary of his study. Basically, this is interesting, not like when, for example, grow older, you should not be like, okay, I'm, I'm done. Since I've started it younger, now I don't need it. And by the way, I think uh, the, the this thing of st study philosophy, Philosophy is not only to read. This is interesting. This is a very interesting thing. And share your thoughts with me about this thing. A philosophy is not only to read. It's, but it's about, at the same time, to observe and put these things, certain things at the same time in practice. But at the same time, it's only about reading, but observing at the same time. For example, I was near the river with my friend. Uh, and we were just there walking, and that's all, taking a walk. And I was watching at this river, Yvonne, and I was looking at it and I knew that it was not very deep at all. But because the um, because of the bad weather, like the waters, uh, you could not see the deepness of the water, but I knew that this water wasn't that deep at all. Uh, but it seemed deep, so I was thinking, and I was looking at the other side and I had all these philosophical thoughts of, oh, I will never be able to go on this same water even if I want to go there again. And sometimes in life, things seem this way that uh, I was looking at the other side of the river. Like, it seems that it's a lot more deeper and it needs a lot more depth and power to cross this thing to go on the opposite side. But it's not the true at the same time because I, I, I see it, I, I know it, that this river is not as deep as it seems. But because of the weather and because of this thing, like it seems you cannot see how deep it is. Like it would not like bury him. It would not even be like uh, be half of um, get close to like half of my like, and I'm five foot eleven. So it would not even be able to get close to that. Uh, so it would not even reach my waist essentially. And but, and I knew it. And sometimes I was like thinking this thing philosophical, maybe life is this, there are things that are this way, that way. It seems a lot more deeper than it actually is to go on the other side. Like it seems like a mystique and stuff, but it's not that hard. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's not that hard. So like, this is the thing, like right? this is the observation, philosophical observation you have, I had, for example. Uh, and 
you may have experienced the same thing of uh, oh, looking at, for example, you cannot write on the water. Like, what's the point of if you were to try to write on the water? Well, it disappears. So, you, and I wasn't, and this philosophical thought came to me like, kind, trying to do kindness is like trying to write on the water. Uh, and yeah, this is my philosophical thought, a poetic slash philosophical thought that came to me. So, it's not only about this thing of uh, reading, but it's also being an observer. Like, you cannot become a thinker just by reading, but you have to also have able to, uh, be able to like stand back and observe a law, be able to do that. For men, being accustomed always to their own virtues, welcome those like themselves, but regard all that is not of their nature as alien. Just because you may don't share my thoughts or I don't share the, your thoughts, and like let's say we don't share same virtues and stuff like this does not mean that we should look at this uh, like each other as any aliens right this is why like the, the fight between different ideologies happen and one other thing by the way and maybe a little bit off topic here but one other thing for example about conflict is that the one side calls the other side uh, um, animal essentially or animal they refers to as an animals why that happens because you start to degrade your enemies in your head. And uh, there is this uh, thing that you are kind of measured by your enemies. So who are your enemies? What kind of power they have? You are measured by your enemies. So if you tell me that your enemies are um, nobodies, then like, what's that? Like, don't be this petty thing. Because if you have this petty thing, so then, et cetera, your life also will be petty. So let me read this again. For men being accustomed always to their own virtues welcome those like themselves, but regard all that is not of their nature as alien. So have this uh, thing in your mind, like just because uh, someone don't share your own virtues stuff, like don't you welcome those people, like and it's only a natural thing, but don't be like to them like others, like don't be that, don't don't be that judgmental about things, and always leave for yourself a room to manner. Or, like, change your opinion if you find that you were wrong. All good and evil consists in sensation. Again, this is very deep insight. Now, let's talk about the death. There is nothing terrible in life for the man who has truly comprehended that there is nothing terrible in not living. Uh, basically, think about tens of billions of years spectrum like one of the things i learned was that like 2000 years is nothing for evolution it's really nothing like it's a sh i know it seems ridiculous for us as human beings but for evolution it's not and like what is a lifespan of 2000 years for a planet and huge stars like sun what is 2000 years for them like seconds so like look at the, like yourself from that spectrum like Look at yourself from that grand spectrum of cosmos and this idea of what we are compared to we are like we are on uh, or our own little anthill right now, and it's hilarious thing like it's genuinely like same thing like this is a like a true and not true same time time type of thing like uh, like same thing that seems pro like dramatic can seem like funny like, if you look at it from this perspective how funny is it for these uh, anthill uh, owners to fight each other and dispute about borders and stuff from that grand perspective. How funny that thing seems. But at the same time, uh, it happens, right? So there is nothing terrible in life for men who has truly comprehended that there is nothing terrible in not living. Like, I personally, Neither anyone, any human has answered to this question. But let's try to speculate a little bit. Like, before I was born and reached 13 age, I was not aware of that I was born. And neither was I aware of where I was, essentially. So how, how what time I've, we've spent on that state as human beings, we don't know. And what other animals spend that time? Because we look at ourselves as the humans, right? It's a hilarious thing of human that thinks that we are the world, right? But that's not true. Like, so there, like, there is no difference where other animals like 
just like this idea of as if only like uh, we humans have this soul and animals don't have stuff that's what i'm referring to and the idea of soul also is debatable but the thing is that how funny it seems if you were to look at it from that perspective right like um, yeah there is nothing terrible in not living there like you would not know that thing you you were not bothered by fact that you were not alive when you were not alive whoever we, wherever we are coming from like this is like mystery biggest mystery like there's so many theories and speculations about this thing but there is no exact answer unless we can consider the answers we cannot question which i'm not down for that and i hope there you are i would rather have questions we, we, to my which i can answer than answers which i can't question so here's this thing now neither does life offend him nor does the absence of life seem to be any evil like those uh, this is about the thinking about these people that are very you know, negative toward life and uh, critique of life of this thing and stuff right there are, if you truly don't want to experience this little spam of whatever we we are given because anything that can happen in time can happen right now like maybe like some horrifying accident happens and plane falls down and literally falls in my house right now where i am sitting and i will simply end up dead like this thing has possibility of happening maybe asteroid comes in right now out of nowhere and delays entire mankind how do we know that similarly like delayed button or many many other things may happen or my like simply so many ways we can die so and at the same time when these type of people are like um this uh, um, idea toward life like this um, certain way of um, like neither does life offend him nor does the absence of life seem to be any evil like if these people uh, pe type of people are like no i don't like life but where you can check out nobody tell in fact like even stoicism agrees uh, with this thing and it seems that pure and as well like with this thing that there is nothing like if you are this way like check out like nobody like one of the beautiful things of life is that life is not to us as like hey please buddy stay please buddy stay thankfully it's not that way toward us if you want to check out check out anytime you want but again don't do it for the bs reasons bs reasons as most people do and there is nothing unknowable uh, about this thing and you can check uh, my another video of letters from a stoic uh, by saying where i also talk about that thing even more deeply if you're interested in this stuff now let's continue of all this the beginning and the greatest good is prudence this is again very beautiful and power this is very not beautiful like genuinely realistic idea of uh, epicureanism which i found very interesting of all this the beginning and the greatest good is prudence wherefore prudence is a more precious thing even than philosophy philosophy whoa look at this even more precious than even philosophy for from prudence are sprung all the other virtues and it teaches us that it is not possible to live pleasantly without living prudently and honorably and justly nor again to live a life of prudence honor and justice without living pleasantly like prudence is one of this thing and at the end of the video will be a book about prudence as well so you can click on that as well prudence is something we need like we cannot possibly and nobody is by the way neither any wise man like can tell you everything directly and you know like be like hey this is this thing like some things we have to learn and understand ourselves not any everything can be taught not everything can be explained like you have to first of all willing to drink this uh, whatever this philosophical for example teaching and but also you have to have the capability to have access on it right but drinking part is up to you so prudence is one of those things it is necessity it is necessity like you can by the way be prud without prudence like what are you doing you can say same thing with prudence so this is uh, the continuous of this idea that i'm trying to uh, tell you right now uh, which this quote refers to for it is better in a man's action that what is well chosen chosen should fail rather than what is ill chosen should successful successful should be successful owning to chance 
Again, this is the prudence, idea of prudence. For it is better in a man's action that what is well chosen should fail. Because it is well chosen. Because this is what happens. Rather than that what is ill chosen should be successful, successful, owning to chance. This is where we get uh, the lucky idiots or um, lucky just people that just got lucky and now they rationalize their luck and think that oh they made prudent choices this is a, this is this direct quote refers to prudence like these people like lucky losers uh, or fool or fools and, and plus chance and plus luck so now they rationalize because they made ill decision but they just got lucky it's like it's like playing with rational roulette and they just got lucky for it is and again i love this for it is better in a man's action that what is well chosen should fail rather than that what is ill chosen should be successful, owning to chance. And this is it, guys. Choose any of these videos that will be here. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. See you.